Welcome to another bite-sized episode of Cream Rises Up. Semiconductors is amongst the key components that are driving the world economy in the 21st century. Currently, there is a fierce battle brewing between the two superpowers of our planet, America and China, to claim a larger slice of this enormously profitable pie. Over much of 2022, the US started to take steps to freeze China out of the industry. The US even convinced Japan and the Netherlands to restrict chip exports to this Asian giant. As it currently stands, America is only targeting on crippling China's ability to import and manufacture cutting-edge chips like the ones we find in the latest smartphones and video game consoles. While the high-end sector of China's chip industry suffers, the country may take a bigger role in manufacturing older-generation chips that are still widely used in everyday life. U.S. restrictions only limits China's ability to produce chips with 14 nanometer nodes or better, which is basically the chip-making technology introduced in the last eight years. The restrictions don't apply to producing chips with older technologies. These restrictions triggered the Chinese government to push to develop the country's chip industry. In 2021, the semiconductor sector was the most popular destination for venture capital money as investors said they were happy to piggyback on the Chinese government's priorities. As a result of the government's action, many Chinese semiconductor companies are in the middle of initial public offering to bolster their potential. These semiconductor companies raised to the tune of $12 billion from domestic initial public offerings in 2022, nearly three times what they raised in 2021. They have filed for another $17 billion worth of IPOs in mainland China. To the surprise of many, older chips are still widely used in electronics, cars, and other ordinary objects. Chinese chip manufacturers are still making a ton of money by selling their products to big car and electronics companies to keep afloat. Their share of the legacy chip market is significantly higher than their European and American counterparts. Part of the reason China maintains an advantage here is that in a market of mature, lower-end technologies, price is the most important thing. And China has been historically great at low-cost mass production thanks to low labor costs and generous industrial subsidies from the government. The West is already worrying about the influx of Chinese legacy chip manufacturers working with many globally renowned brands. Observers are stating their concerns that the surge of Chinese companies in the low-end chip segment will completely decimate European and American firms who also compete within the same ground. Reinforcing this fact, Dan Hutchison, an economist at research firm Tech Insights told Reuters saying, quote, the Chinese could just flood the market with these technologies. Normal companies can't compete because they can't make money at those levels, unquote. One might say a certain Western bias is attached to this quote, but the fact remains China still has the means to effectively monopolize the low-cost chip market and dominate this niche for the foreseeable future. To combat China's aggressive push towards the low-end semiconductor market segment, President Biden signed into law the bipartisan chip and Science Act of 2022 and set aside $2 billion specifically for incentivizing domestic production of these technologies. According to some experts, the European Union will also introduce its own chip legislation in the next two years to counteract China's aggressive move towards monopolizing this lucrative market. Despite this effort from the EU and the US, experts are still convinced that China will maintain its advantage when it comes to producing and supplying legacy chips. John Lee, the director of East West Futures Consulting, said, quote, a lot of this capacity is already in China. Most of the new capacity at these mature nodes is being built in China, and there's a limited capacity of chip-making equipment supply, even if the money and the political will is there to develop this in the US and the EU." Unquote. The overall consensus amongst analysts within the industry is China's slice of the pie is getting bigger when it comes to manufacturing low-sophistication chips in high volumes. So, it will be fascinating to watch how the dynamics between the West and China develops when it comes to semiconductor manufacturing and supply chain in the years ahead. The two major questions in the mind of many are, will China's legacy chip industry prosper while the country struggles to build the high-end sector? Or will the US government introduce more restrictions to throttle China further? I guess we will find out soon enough how this geopolitical tit-for-tat will shape the future of chip manufacturing.